ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to those two views. He's Alex. I'm Joe. Cold to potatoes, as someone that we follow would say, there is a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're on the precipice of San Diego Comic Con. Um, there's a lot in movie news. There's a lot in wrestling news. Basically, I just said this exact sentence to Alex a few minutes ago. But yeah, there's there's a lot to talk about. Um, there is. I figured let's go with the big one. The big one is the elephant in the room is the uh, the SAG um, writers uh, and actors strike. The the SAG guild yeah. writers and actors. So for context, this is we're recording this on the fifteenth of July. I think it's coming out. Yeah, uh, on the twenty third. So we're mm-hmm. recording it. There's there's about a week before recording in, and uh, and uh, and when and God, I can't even think. And release date. So there's every chance a strike might be over by now. I can't see it, it's but not, uh, yeah, yeah, like sure. the so the writer strike has put us. Sorry, the actor strike combined with the writer strike has put an end to. Um, the Deadpool three filming. Yep. For everything. now, for now, every, I mean, everything is going to be a for now, but I don't know how many of you remember or are old enough to remember the writer strike. It was what? Oh, five. So 18 years ago. Yep. That is the reason we have so many reality TV shows to this day, because reality TV technically doesn't need a writer because it's, reality he says in quotation marks correct and uh i think that's where a lot of um you know survivor i know big brother is already a thing in europe at the time i don't know how it was over here but i think that's why you get something like survivor is on its 50th season when it's only been around for 20 years because they pounded so many out because that's yeah. what they could do right you can't do a lot when there's no writers and you can't even say for example, look at the boys when even though filming is mostly done or the script is written and they're filming it, the writing doesn't stop because maybe you're rewriting dialogue lines or you're doing voiceover that you're rewriting based on certain yeah. context. So that couple with the actor strike, like I don't know how much we'll get. Like, I don't think we'll see an impact of this truly until about six to eight months down the line when you realize all of the projects that have stopped. Yeah haven't filled in the gap that they would be at so i'm gonna liken it to um disney world in with the pandemic years Mm. when you know disney would obviously shut down for a part of 2020 and then after 2020 there's a lot of people still couldn't travel for various covid reasons like either coming back to their country they were in lockdown isolation that kind of thing so it wasn't until I think this year, like so the last year and a half, that the demand of people do, doing like makeup vacations and finally getting out to things they couldn't do in conjunction with people already planning to go, that the crowds have started to settle a bit more now. And you're starting to see a bit more of the typical, hey, we're going to encourage people to come at this time of year discount. As opposed mm. to we're going to have to have reservations so we know how many people are in the parks at any one time because there's more demand than supply at the moment. And I think, I think you're going to see that in a year and a half or so when all of a sudden you've got all of these shows that are finally ready to go. Look at what happened with Disney plus when they were able to finish shooting Captain America in the winter soldier, the fact, you know, Falcon winter soldier, Scarlet, uh, one division, all of those things just hit, you know, one finished, wait a week, another one starts, wait a week, another one starts. Like there was just so much coming out. And I think that, yeah. that I think that contributed to our, all of our collective burnout for so many things. Like I think even in 2023, we're still seeing the results of the pandemic in terms of entertainment where we're, I agree. We're kind of burnt out from superhero shows yeah. and comic shows because there were so many of them. We had such a drought of it for almost eight to nine months is the cinemas were all shut uh they would release i think that was a f- impressive sneeze they would Thank release you. um black widow yeah uh, direct to disney plus or direct or they released it in theater and also on disney plus you know they, they did a lot of things like that 
but they yeah. just then kept going and kept going and now all of a sudden they've caught up to where they're at and like i don't know about you but i feel like i need a break from some of it as well i do like, too so to your point i wonder if that's why i saw black widow in the theater five times maybe when it was released subconsciously remember i was super high on black widow mm-hmm. and i still love the movie I was like putting it up there as one of the best. And then I'm like rewatching it recently within, no, within like a year ago, I watched it. And maybe it's because I saw it five times previously, but watching it on streaming, I'm like, this is good. But I'm kind of like, I, I saw, I felt myself like looking down at my phone. I was skipping around and things like that. And yeah. I was like, huh, I wonder if this was just like, I was so starving for content in movie theater that like I just salivated and they, they latched onto it. And I remember that, like, I was like, oh, well, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has to be like this, too, because I'm like, that's that's the barometer I gave. If I don't see it five times in the theater, the movie's shit. But that's not true at all. No, because there's some great movies I haven't seen more than twice, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I I need a break, too. I mean, I, I still have Andor on my thing. I still have the last three episodes of Secret Invasion I haven't watched. I still have three quarters of The Mandalorian season three. Um, Ahsoka's right around the corner in like two weeks. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, I need a break. Like, it would be almost beneficial to have like a drought again, but you don't want too long of a drought. You know what I mean? No, no, not at all. And then um, that's the thing too. And I was thinking about this and I thought about this for a second. Does wrestling require writers? I mean, they require writers, but they're not screen actor guild writers. So then they're exempt from this, right? I don't see. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. I'm, I'm going to assume that that I think because it it's I think a lot of the booking is done by Tony Khan along with like Brian Danielson and so and co. Yeah, I don't know if they don't need writers in the same way because obviously if there is a writer the writer strikes me going on for a while and if you watch the uh, being the elite youtube channel you'll notice that like ryan nemeth has actually been joining the strike lines every so often so he's been kind of coming and going and so clearly they're acknowledging the strike yeah that's true so because wwe hires more outside writers than AEW does yeah but wwe's been going every single week so, so either they yeah, got storylines out the wazoo or wow, it is bucketing torrential rain again man it is, this is crazy it's just the sky keeps opening and closing like every That's couple insane. hours like right now we... there's no frogs falling then i don't <laughs> when i see frogs then i'm like oh shit i probably should have got all my affairs in order but um yeah you right, know. right now we're we're sun and cloud it's uh, 24 Celsius feels like 31, which translates oh. to 75 feels like 88. Damn. And, and it, it's it's 10.30 in the morning. Yeah. No, this is bucketing rain, like piss, piss, piss rain. Um, What I was going to say, though, is, yeah, so wrestling seems to be exempt, probably, and things like that. But, yeah, I'm pissed because we'll segue into this. You know, we're not going to hang mm-hmm. on the writer's strike too long. Wolverine and fucking Deadpool in Deadpool 3. Like, we finally get the reveal of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in his costume. And I've got to say, I love it. They nailed it. Mm -hmm. It is perfect, astonishing X-Men with long sleeves. Do you know what? So I I was reading it. Somebody said that because of Hugh's uh, skin Skin cancer issues, that's that's why why they've got the sleeves. I I was looking at it. You know what? It actually makes complete sense to me because even though he can heal, it doesn't necessarily mean he wants to get cut or, or honestly, whatever. Like, I think it's clearly just a, de- a if you look at I'll the honest, patterns on aesthetically, it. Aesthetically, it looks better than it would look like without short, without sleeves. Agreed. I agree. Because I was thinking um, in, yeah, in a comic book, it works. Some mm-hmm. things don't translate to media that well. And I don't no. think him with lo- with short sleeves on a, I don't know. I think it would look goofy. It would look really goofy. So I, I like the idea. It's not the flight suit. It's not the Grant Morrison X Men uniform, which I did not mind back in 2000 because I got X Men on my screen. I didn't give a shit if it was flight suits. But 
this I is still, I still think those suits work for the time, though. I still like those they, movies. The, those suits are fantastic. Yeah, for the time, they worked great. They're a team. Mm. They should have flight suits, and they should, you know, we were in an era where everything was more like hyper, you know, real world instead of oh, let's yep. just throw colorful things on there. So, I, do you know, I read one of the most interesting things about Wolverine's suit. Mm. It was in return of wolverine i don't know what issue it was in and mm -hmm. there was a, a lady or scientist that was kind of uh he had been resurrected and they were trying to pull him back and she was trying to help him escape and she said yeah. i knew you were a real hero when i saw you jumping around in bright yellow oh because, yeah yeah i've read this line too yeah, yeah like all of the bad guys aim for you because you're the right. most bright the brightest Hard. target on yeah. you know wherever you are so they all aim for you and you know you can take it which lets other people get away safely um maybe you know like say cyclops isn't the taking the brunt of the force right right which, which it always fascinated or it's fascinated me ever since because i'm like that's a really good reason for him to wear yellow like what's well, the same yellow. reason that they pro 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 proclaim that robin wore red and green yeah back at the bill finger days because, to make him he, a big target and so they don't notice Batman taking them out from the back. In, from the back. Exactly. You want to hear something funny? Mm. That's one of the very first conversations we've ever had on air. If you think it? about it. Yeah. yeah. I remember it distinctly. That's why we were talking about it in almost the same context. But it was Wolverine. It was that issue. Whatever that issue was, we were talking about the brightly you know, colored costume. And I think I even commented on Robin back then. You too. probably that, did. Yeah, you probably did. Just me back. Really, like in wow. the time scene, like wow, that was. We're talking like eight or nine years ago. I was gonna say that's gotta be a, that's gotta be eight years ago. Or so yeah, at least yeah. Time flies, but no, I mean I'm super stoked for it. And, and if that's the first content we're getting out the gate, oh, sign me up. I I, it, I will accept mm -hmm. all the other movies being delayed to get this one. Yeah, agreed. I, I, agreed. No problem. I, do you know what I do like is that if you look at the contours on the suit, it looks like another Deadpool suit. Yeah, like it, a yellow Deadpool suit? Yeah, it looks like a yellow Deadpool suit with blue bits on it. Kind of. Yeah, it kind of looks like what, you know, the second Barry did in mm. uh, The Flash, where he took Michael Keaton's suit and kind of like, um, you know, like appropriated it for his purposes. Yeah. Kind of. But um, I just I'm, think it again, looks really I'm, good. I'm I'm fine with that. I think it looks fantastic. I just and think I it's think interesting. We're gonna get him mostly unmasked through the movie. You might see a couple scenes with him in a mask, and I think that's fine too. Because again, depending on the mask, it might not translate to media super well. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? All I can say is I'm waiting for the hot toy of both of them. I want the updated bright red suit, and I want the Logan. I've been waiting to get a Log Hugh Jackman Logan for my um, hot toy. I got rid of mm. my Deadpool because I'm like, no, I want the new Deadpool. Um, and I might as well sell with the iron, strike with the iron tot. But oh, yeah, that's just it. If you can sell it now, when it's so yeah, kind of premium. That's what I did. So, um, but yeah, no, I want to see this. I want like a, a total whole movie of them basically like mystery theater science a mystery science theater 3000 just like walking the desert and like commenting on shit like, yeah i just i want a shit fest of a movie and they say he's gonna break the wall like fourth wall way more than he ever did and now i'm fine with that but i want to see if like logan breaks it too or if logan's like who the fuck are you talking to like you know what i mean like that kind of stuff yeah i think that would be funny yeah they already have electra jennifer garner has already been confirmed as Electra returning. That's so, fun. You know for damn sure you're getting Ben Affleck. I don't know mm -hmm. why they haven't confirmed him, but you're getting him. I wonder if they're not going to confirm him because it's um, one of those, they'll try and do a surprise reveal. Yeah, but the also, the big question is, do you get Halle Berry as Storm? Do you get Famke Jansen as, as Jean? Do you get... Uh, James Marsden as Cyclops. Do you get Patrick Stewart as Professor X, Kelsey Grammer? Do you get these guys, or are they already dead at this point in the story? Because it's going to be uh, Deadpool kills the Fox universe. They won't call it kills the Fox universe. They don't have the balls for that. 
but it's definitely going to be loosely that he kills the Fox universe for sure. Mm. I would. It's got to be something like that. Well, think about it. It's it's Jennifer Garner, Electra. She's Fox. Yeah, she's uh, not coming. Ben Affleck, he's Fox. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, you'll probably get a glimpse of. You might get Chris Evans in this under like Human Torch context of Fox. You, there. I think they're gonna go really, really out on this. Knowing Ryan Reynolds, I think they're gonna put a lot into it. I think you're gonna get a lot of cameos, but it won't be just a cameo fest. Um, it'll be like I, wrapping up I the just, Fox universe. Yeah, well, they're killing it, so he can go over yeah. to Marvel. And Hugh Jackman, obviously, the way I envision it is, people are like, why would Hugh Jackman go around killing his universe? You know what I mean? Why would Wolverine go around killing his universe? Well, maybe he finds out how Logan's going to happen, and he doesn't want that. My envision of it is Deadpool's, the final scenes, is going to be Deadpool crossing over into the MCU. That'll be the scene we get to close the movie. It will be Deadpool proper in the MCU with somebody from our MCU, whether it be Nick Fury or whatever. But he's over here now. That's what's going to happen, I believe. But I feel like I'm envisioning this whole, like, um, crisis on infinite Earth's end with Barry and and running into the Speed Force to kill the mm. monitor, I figure it's going to be like Wolverine sacrificing himself to get Deadpool over into the MCU. To get rid of him. Yeah, to either get rid of him or to get him over into the MCU. You're right, probably to get rid of him. Because yeah. they do have a fight scene. They showed like the, you know, the, them fighting with the wires and stuff, and it's pretty cool. So, yeah. I just think it's going to be a brilliant movie. Both Deadpool movies have been absolute knockouts. Um, Logan is a masterpiece. You and I mm-hmm. both agree. It's in the top five. It's in the top five of all time, I believe. Oh, absolutely. Like not only superhero movies, but for me in yeah. general, it's in the top five. It's just a masterpiece of a movie. So I'm yeah. looking really forward to that. I hope this strike doesn't affect us too long because they were cooking. They were going fast. Mm-hmm. Now. But hey, if it's going to affect it to the point where it gives it better quality, I'm all for it. I can wait, you know, another six months. What's the big deal? And that's just it. I mean, at the end of the day, if if writers and actors aren't getting paid on the residuals for streaming service views, mm-hmm. I'm I I like in that, that that's the case. Like, if the only people making money on streaming service views are the people who didn't actually create the work, I'm yeah. all for I'm all for them striking because, like, what if you say if you and I were in a show we got paid yeah. like a small amount because it wasn't expected to be big and then over mm-hmm. time all of a sudden it just balloons out and it's the most popular thing around you're right but you don't see anything from that of course you're gonna right. be pissed right of course you're gonna yeah, be pissed. so absolutely i get it i understand it um i hope i hope they get a deal that's fair for them yeah i, I agree too i don't i the, the context of the strike i'm not mad at it at all no not at oh, all oh don't be pissed at the creators pissed at the studio i am pissed at the studio and i had this argument with my cousin yesterday i'm like you know what everyone should just fucking stop going to the movie theaters right now and stop streaming stuff right now new content and he's like don't be mad at the the actors they still need i'm like no but you have to show the studio that you're angry and the only way to show the studio you're angry is to not go to the theater you can't go to the theater if you're angry at the studio because and yet the studio aren't going to take the right message from that either are they and that's what's so frustrating yeah, it's like you go to the theater, you, you're benefiting the studio no matter what you do. Yeah. But speaking of going to the theater, I want to go to the theater very badly to see Mutant Mayhem, the Ninja Turtles movie, because I was watching something on it. It got a six minute standing ovation when it aired. That's pretty six good. Standing ovation. Yeah. That's damn good. And. You know, but here's the thing, though. I've been burned by these early reviews before. Remember, I told you that The Flash was one of the best movies that people have ever seen. They put it up there with The Dark Knight. I have no idea who the hell those people were. Yeah. Because they were so wrong. So wrong. Sorry, Christopher Nolan. I will never say those two movies in the same sentence again. Never. Oh, my God. But anyways, Flash rant over again. 
<laughs> it's like a new reoccurring thing. It's the new I love Tom King, but it's our new segment. It's me ripping on the flash. But um yeah, no, I'm I'm looking very forward to it. Just like I'm looking forward to the the new Superman movie. The only thing I'm not liking is the announcement of the new characters they were putting in it for the for the heroes. Mm. So James Gunn put Mr. Terrific, Hawk Girl, uh Metamorpho the Elemental Man, and um who was it? Mr. Terrific, Hawk Girl, Metamorpho. Uh, there was one more. There's one more. I can't think of the name. But anyways, I'm like, no, what are you doing? Why can't the Superman movie just stand on its own as a Superman movie? Why does it need the extras? You know what I mean? It doesn't need to be what Black Adam did with the JSA. Like, no. Like, I don't it want can, that. Why? It can be oh, Guy a... Oh, uh, Guy mm. Guy Gardner has been confirmed. See, I always thought Nathan Fillion was as... Great Hal Jordan, right? Yes. I know. I don't understand what these people do. You know, he's done the acting in the voice as Hal Jordan multiple times for the DC animated movies. Right? Like... Yeah, I don't see him as Guy Gardner. He's too good looking to be Guy Gardner. He's too warm as well. Yeah, like... Right, like... He can be sarcastic. He can be a douche like Captain Hammer. And I love Captain Hammer. But he, I, I don't know if he can pull off Guy Gardner. Mm. I'm and sure yeah, he could. I'm sure he could. I'm sure he's good enough yeah. to pull it off. I just, I think there are so many fans that see him as. Um, he would have been a hell. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So, and you're putting in a Green Lantern. I, at least I'm giving them props for not putting in Hal and saying, mm. hey, another Green Lantern. And it's not John Stewart or Hal. I'm like, all right, that's cool. But I would have, like, since it's Superman's first, I'd have been like, mm, Alan Scott would have been a really good choice. Mm. And it could be good. just because I ordered the Alan Scott action figure from the Crown <laughs> of today. It could be that. I might be recently biased towards Alan Scott. But I've always loved Alan Scott. I love his costume. I love the cape. And I like how his is magic. His lantern isn't isn't Guardians. His was magic back then. It was mm. like a talisman. I mean, Which I think is interesting. Oa and the Guardians and all that. Because his daughter Jade and all that stuff. But I liked it back when he was just, you know, a pulp hero with a magical lantern that he was going around. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I have high hopes for the Superman movie. David Corn Sweat looks like he's going to be like the second coming of Henry Cavill. Like a de aged Henry Cavill. It's the weirdest thing. He's like 10 years younger. And he's going to be, it'll be like starting over with Henry Cavill again, but with like a brighter, happier Superman this time. Mm. And the chick from Miss Maisel, um, oh, what's her name? Damn it. Uh, it's like Brosnahan or something. I forget her first name. Is it Emily Brosnahan? I think it's like Emily Brosnahan. But anyways, she looks like she'll be a decent Lois. So, and if she's on Miss Maisel, she's got acting chops no matter what. So, I'm, I'm very looking forward to it. I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I just don't want them to throw so much shit in there. You know what I mean? I don't want, like, here's Mr. Terrific, and here's this and that, and here's the Justice League. No. No. Like, let Superman be Superman. and and. Someone else said this too. Okay, fine. If you're going to pepper in these guys, I get it. Please keep Bruce and Diana away from this project right now. Mm -hmm. Like, because it will outshine Superman, you know? Like, don't, don't do that. Just have them mentioned that they exist in the universe. You know, what, you know what I mean? But you don't need to show them. And I guess the reason why James Gunn's doing it is that he was putting, like, I want to show Superman in his workplace environments. So he wants to show him with his work friends at the Daily Planet and his work friends superheroing. And I'm like, that's tough to pull off because, hi, these are my work friends. And hey, these are my work friends. Like, it's almost like a Saturday Night Live skit if you get into yep. a certain territory. You got to be careful. But I am not going to say I don't have faith in James Gunn because go watch Guardians 3. Guardians 3 is a masterpiece. Oh, like I have full faith in what he can do. Yeah. It's just what can he do with the tools that he has in uh, in the DCU, right? 
Correct. And the other thing is, too, I think Nathan Fillion would have been a cool booster gold, too, if they wanted to go that route. He would have been a good booster gold. Yeah. Agreed. Chris Pratt would be a great booster gold, but Nathan Fillion would be a good booster gold, a really good booster gold. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, you got to remember, people who go, I have no faith in James Gunn because and it stopped pissing rain. So weird. Um, I have no faith in James Gunn because um, faith, not faith. No faith in James Gunn because of the Flash movie. He didn't touch that movie. He just said he stood behind it, which was very stupid of him. Yes. Very stupid. He but, should have said nothing. Yeah, exactly. Like, the best thing he could have said in regards to that movie is absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not praising it, not slagging it off. Exactly. And it's like, dude, this is not James Gunn's work. You can watch that movie and you'll say this is not anything to do with James Gunn. He'd never construct a movie like this. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be that sloppy. And it's funny, too. I watched the thing yesterday on The Flash, how we came back to it, um, is that people were told when they originally saw the Flash movie that the CGI wasn't finished. And now those same people are like, dude, it's the same fucking CGI. It was never finished. It was bad CGI. 100%. 100%. But they told the influencers and the early birds that, you know, hey, it's not finished. Get the word out. It'll look better. It didn't, though. And that's that's something that bit them in the ass, too. Like, they're like, well, I feel like we're shit on from the studio. Mm. So and I think, too, like, obviously part of the reason is that they've got um, so many people were seeing it for free early on. But, right. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, Another movie coming up that I just saw the trailer for again, I'm actually looking forward to this, is Blue Beetle. I'm looking forward to Blue Beetle. It looks fun. It looks really fun. Agreed. Yeah, it's got some elements and people are going to be like, oh, that's like Iron Man and Spider-Man mixed together. Yeah, it, it kind of is. This Jaime Reyes, Jaime Reyes character is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a mech suit, the intergalactic mech suit that, you know, it's organic and he's a teenager. So, yeah, you can draw those kind of lines. But it's, I mean, it, for me, it's a cross, a cross between Spider Man, Iron Man, and, um, and Green Lantern in some ways. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. The, the alien aspect of it. Yep. Like, I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. No, not at all. I think it's going to be a fresh, fun movie. I don't expect a Blue Beetle 2 out of it. But I, I don't know why they picked Susan Sarandon as the main villain besides Carapax. I'm like, I have to go back to my Blue Beetle comics and be like, wait, what the fuck was Jaime Reyes fighting? Because I mm. remember Jaime Reyes de debuted during um, Infinite Crisis in issue five. Yes. And I have that. I love that cover, too. It's one of my favorite covers with the Blue Beetle on the cover. And I remember being pissed at that time. I'm like, where the hell's Ted Cord? Oh, yeah, they shot him in the head four months ago by Maxwell Lord. Gratuitous panel shooting him right in the mm -hmm. head point blank. You see his brain pop off the other side. So yeah, just, not just to remove any no doubt, right? Yeah, I don't remember how they brought Ted Cord back, but they sure did. Uh, it was New Fifty Two. We just New Fifty Two. Yeah, when the universe got reset. You're yeah. right. Yeah, good old retcon universe reset punches. Uh, yeah, you can do anything. Well, absolutely. Do you know that was the stupidest reveal I think DC has ever done? Is not the New Fifty Two. That started pretty cool. I liked Batwoman and all that. Mm. <clears throat> the reveal that Superboy Prime from Crisis on Infinite Earths was sitting in a cave punching, like, yeah, images of reality, like he was pun he punched his way out was was dumb. Not the punching your way out, but punching every time you punched the wall, it shook reality so that something different glitched. I was like, what the hell is this? Like, how are they even there anyway? Everything should have died on crisis after Barry sacrificed himself, but whatever. They thought it was a good idea, and they're like, all right, well, we're just going to do one more crisis. Don't worry, no more We'll crisis. just do one more reboot for the next five years, and we'll do another one. It was like getting to the point where they were doing a reboot every three to four years. Yeah. And we just wrapped up a crisis. They had dark crisis. I, you know? Do you know, honestly, that's part of the reason why I think I don't read DC Comics as much anymore other than Agreed. just a one or two, because there's just too many reboots and... Everything and is to everything. It doesn't have anything standalone, which is... No, and like I, I miss... 
being able to pick up a comic and then not being an event of some kind like dark races yeah. or dark like dark knight's metal for me i love scott snyder but so do i Dark Knight's Metal has completely and utterly ruined my ability to enjoy DC Comics because everything yeah. has been metal this, metal that, Dark yeah, Knight, yeah. right? Like, everything is tied into some kind of, like, metal storyline. Yeah. And I keep thinking, like, I don't... I just don't care. Yeah. And I didn't enjoy the first one. It was... I liked the first one. Death and Dark Knight's Metal, it, I enjoyed. It didn't grab me. And then when everything else after that started going, you know, doing that that much, you know, go do the Dark yeah, Knight's yeah. Metal formula and just amping it up to 11, which I'm yeah. sure is a deliberate reference to uh, Spinal Tap amps being turned to 11. Um, like everything is, uh, it's everything I didn't like about Dark Knight's Metal has come back in droves for everything yeah, else. No. and. They like, had right. like a couple cool ideas in Dark Knight's Death Metal. You know, mm -hmm. you had Castle Bat, which I thought was really cool. It was something along the lines of like Game of Thrones meets Batman with all the territories and stuff. But then when they did like the Batmobile Beast and Swamp Thing as Batman and all that, I'm like, what in the actual fuck? Then you got Golden Wonder Woman to reset the universe with a chainsaw. I'm like, holy crap. Whose acid trip of a dream was this? Was it Capullo's or Snyder's? Because it was like, Jesus. It was just, yeah. No, it took me out, too, for a while. Mm. And um, it, everything's part of an event. And it reminds me, like, you know when events were done well, and I hate to say it because it sounds like one of those people on, like, a rocking chair on a porch? The 90s were when events were done well. Now, in the 90s, especially for Marvel, you couldn't pick up a Marvel comic book without it being an editor's note of read ASM 640, I mean, 346, and then read AS, I mean, read Web of Spider-Man, read X-Men, you know, like everything was tied to everything. You had Onslaught, amazing. One of my favorites. Yeah. You had the Clone Saga, Maximum Carnage, one of my favorites. You had so many events back then, but they all were good. And they were all specific to, other than Onslaught, Almost everything was specific to the titles that they were in. Like yeah. you had Maximum Clonage or the Carnage Saga. Yeah. Uh, I've got that wrong, I'm sure, but you yeah, had yeah. those and it didn't yeah. really cross over into X Men or anything else. It was just a specific Spider Man thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, that, but now it's like, oh, everything's tied into everything all the time. And it's like, uh, uh. Like, I'm over it. Just come on. That's why Image Comics took off, was people were like, I'm sick of reading, like, 45 books a month. I want to read something that's contained. And then Image is yep. like, well, right this way, sir. Why didn't you speak up earlier? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I'm looking... I don't know. It, it really soured me on Capullo and Snyder for a bit. And I love Capullo and Snyder. It's still my favorite Batman run. I keep thinking about it. It's definitely still my favorite Batman run. It's it's my favorite Batman run, but I think I I cap it for me at new fifty two issue fifty two. Yeah, like, that's that, the end of it. Yeah, because even though it go, look, they continue to tell stories together, like All Star Batman, like oh yeah 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 yeah, you know they continue to start tell stories together, or Snyder continues to tell stories. Yeah, it's it's not. I, it just doesn't strike the same chord as the is that initial no, fifty two issue run. Not at all. The yeah, the, the first fifty two issues are fabulous. Mm -hmm. From the Court of Owls, which was such such a breath of fresh air. The Court of Owls was so good. The last Batman story before that, I mean, yes, Grant Morrison's Batman story will always hold an amazing place in my heart. The run is brilliant. Mm -hmm. But, like, my top three of all time for Batman runs is Nightfall, Grant Morrison, and Scott Snyder. Yeah. There hasn't been anything since. I think if you read those three Batman runs, you get the epitome of what Batman is, and that's all you really, really need. I Batman. really like War Games as well. It was too long, but yes, that's the one where they kill Stephanie Brown. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Black Mask kills her. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he doesn't really kill her. You find out like 30 issues later that Leslie saved her, but just took her off the board. Yeah, that's just it. Like it, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, War Games, that was fun. I really, really enjoyed it. It was one of the first Batman stories I've read. Like, yeah, in it long was form. very impactful when mm. he killed her. Because he killed her, like, hanging on the wall, like, tied up, gruesomely killed her. So you're like, oh, my God, this has stakes to it, right? Mm-hmm. And then they retconned it, of course, because Stephanie Brown was popular. But I liked, what was the one? Um, oh, what the hell is it called? The one where everything crumbles, the city falls apart. No Man's yeah. Land. There we go. I love the ending of No Man's Land. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. I, I didn't like the whole No Man's Land. I got to reread it. It's like a long, long run. I think it's like 50 something issues for No Man's Land, maybe a little bit longer because it crossed over everywhere. Yeah, Which it's really long. Introduced into the, um, you know, the, the DC um, universe and all that. Um there's a scene in there at the end, or towards the end. It might not be the very end, but it's at the end where Batman is on Jim Gordon's patio, mm-hmm. like where the bushes mm-hmm. is and everything. And No Man's Land is like pretty much come to an end. Gotham's getting put back together. They're scraping everything back together. And he's like, Jim, I just want to let you know I couldn't have done any of this without you, blah, blah, blah. You are my best friend and this and that. And Bruce go, takes his cowl off and stands behind Jim. And Jim doesn't turn around. Yeah, like he doesn't want to know. Doesn't want to know, but he already knows. Yeah. He goes, I don't want to know. I don't need to know. I think part of me already knows, but that will change everything forever. Please put your mask back on. Like, I just think that character beat is so incredibly impressive because it builds batman and gordon's relationship for what it is in the comic books now Mm -hmm. like undoubtedly during snyder's run they don't say it again but undoubtedly during snyder's run especially when jim was batman and bruce comes back he knows bruce is batman oh absolutely it's an unspoken knowing bruce is batman and then one of the great wrinkles that snyder introduced is one of the best all-time wrinkles that no writer ever introduced i think is that the Joker's always been aware of it, too. And he just doesn't care. Didn't care until he did care in Endgame, yep. where he's like, you know what? You're not fun to play with anymore. Fuck you. Hi, I'm Bruce. Murder everything. And God, I love Endgame. And I love that scene where he calls Bruce on the payphone. Yep. He's like, how are you doing, Bruce? And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, what the... <laughs> Ah, oh, man. But well, we went off on a little tangent there. I forget what the original point was. Doesn't matter. We were talking good Snyder. And, uh, I was going to say, I don't remember. I actually don't remember what the original point was. <laughs> Normally we're good at circ- circling back, but I really No, I have no idea what that original one was. No. And I haven't, <laughs> been, take, I haven't <laughs> been taking notes to initially. And Nate's a billion, and then it lost me. I lost us. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been taking notes during this show, so I, I, got, I got nothing. Yeah, so, you know, that's movie news, because that was movie news with comic book <laughs> rap. Um, but, yeah, so that's movie news, and now we can go on to our favorite subject, which is toys. Mm-hmm. Because San Diego Comic-Con is next week. Now, like, Well, this week, I guess, if depending on when you're listening. Yeah, this week, right, you're right, this week coming up. There's um, a lot of stuff that's been trickled out. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm praying for not a lot of exclusives, which I know I won't get my wish. There's going to be tons of exclusives because I can't afford them all right now. Um, definitely things are tight right now this these past two weeks, and I'm trying mm. to get everything in order. Plus, I want to be able to send your stuff. Plus, I want to be able to pay, um, you know, Jeff for the comic book coming soon. That might have to be, like, first thing in August. If he has to sell it, he has to sell it. But right now, yeah. i got to take care of stuff at home base. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so, like, McFarlane's just pooping out exclusives, which is fine, because most of his stuff I don't need. Because he did this, like, red, white, and blue Superman. I don't know if you saw that. I think so. It looks like Superman flew through a freaking Benjamin Moore paint shop, and, like, (laughs) he just got it all over him. It's the weirdest artist interpretation of a Superman figure. I'm like, why? Why is this? Who wants this? Who is like, Todd, you know what? 
this would be a great idea. You should make it. You'll make millions. He's like, yeah, that's what I'll do. <laughs> no one's going to buy this fucking thing. But that's fine. He also has a um, Superman and Doomsday two-pack, which is something I have to get. It's gold label. The Doomsday looks phenomenal. He has an articulated jaw. I'm like, oh, this is the Doomsday I want. That's a piece of my collection I've been missing forever. So I need Doomsday. Um, but I got to buy the shitty Superman that goes with it because he screwed up on the face. I'm like, Ugh, whatever, I'll get Superman. The Alan Scott Green Lantern I got, he looks great. Um, the Tim Drake Robin from Nightfall, I ordered him. He looks fantastic. Um, and then, of course, the Batman from Nightfall, but that's been out for months as far as pre-order. Well, they did a gold label exclusive that looks so much better. Like the deco is just unbelievable. It's a darker blue and it's got like the black shading on the face cowl over the blue. And I'm like, ah, this is like legitimate nightfall Batman. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, it's got to go with Bane, even though Bane is way too big for him. I don't care. So right now my Todd McFarlane rule is I'm just collecting Batman from the nineties. That's it, because I got rid of almost all my McFarlane toys. I kept the Superman and Henry Cavill you gave me, because that's a gift, and I love Henry mm -hmm. Cavill. But I got rid of, like, everything else, because I'm like, I don't need it. I don't really need, you know, the Batman who laughs. I, I kind of fizzled out on the Batman who laughs, to be honest with you. He's a great character that I was a big fan of for a while, and then I think they just put him in everything you could imagine. And like It's you said, oversa and, oversaturation, right? It's yeah, the same, it's same thing that happens to um, Deadpool and for yeah, you know, Wolverine in the 90s, right? It was like after a time, you get to a point like, oh, why? I don't. Yeah, I know. Exactly. These are fun, but I just don't need yeah. three, so, 300 Deadpool issues a month. Exactly. So my 90s nostalgia is the only thing that's carrying me from McFarlane Toys and like the oddball, like Alan Scott Green Lantern done right. He looks brilliant. Yeah. I'll put together an old school JSA someday if I can. Um, so that's the McFarlane. Well, I mean, there's way more McFarlane stuff I'm glossing over. Oh, they have the Riddler classic coming out, which looks so good in his jumpsuit. And But I think they're doing them as what they call swole Riddler, where mm. in Nightfall, the very first issue before night, it was the prelude to Nightfall it was the preview. Bane gave Riddler Venom and had Batman fight Riddler on Venom. Batman won, but barely. Riddler was kicking his ass, but Batman won. And Bane was watching from the shadows before we knew who Bane was. And Bane was like, I just wanted to see how what an average happened. man would go against Batman with this this uh, chemical. Yeah. And then he knew that he was going to destroy Batman and wreck shop. And he did. So, like, I want the Riddler from that, of course. Um, things like that I'll keep. And then you have... Jada Toys is doing their uh, evil Ryu Street Fighter. I have Ryu. I have Chung Lee on order. I can't wait for Guile and M. Bison to be released. And um, I skipped Fei Long. Like, I'll go back and get Fei Long at the very end. I just really want the 16 fighters from Turbo. Yeah. And they do. That's all I want. That's, that's my Street Fighter. Anything beyond that is, like, too much. Like, that's why I didn't buy Street Fighter 6 for the console. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, it's PS5 Street Fighter, but like there's like 42 of them or something like that. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's not. After, after a certain point, it does get to be a bit overwhelming, yeah. right? Yeah, so Jaded Toys, I might get Evil Ryu. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I did order, I don't know if you've heard or seen this, the Tomy Back to the Future DeLorean. No, I haven't heard this. Uh, I'm going to send you this thing. So yeah. it's ten, one tenth scale. It fits the NECA figures perfectly. For the Back to the Future, and I have Doc and Marty. It's all die cast. It's LEDs. It's got smoke, rubber tires, everything you can imagine. The doors, all the lights, everything you can imagine from a Back to the Future DeLorean. And so it the retail is four hundred dollars, which it's about twenty inches long. It's worth it with all the craftsmanship. However, because I was part of an early bird, they give me $100 off. Right That's out pretty the good. Gate. So it's $299. You really can't beat it. It's going to be a one of a kind. And not one of a kind, but it's only going to be a one run. They're not going to do this again. I suspect this thing will be exactly like the proton pack, the sail barge, and like the 
has labs that are just like so out of the stratosphere now that people are like, why didn't I back that? Yeah. I predict you that. So if you ever want a DeLorean, like this is your shot. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. And they're not doing it. The money doesn't come out till August 12th. So I'm like, okay. So like I'm tied up in that. I backed out of the GI Joe dragonfly because I had to. I yeah. was like, I can't have every HasLab. It's just too much to keep up with. I'm looking at my Razor Crest right now on, in my living room. It's still like my centerpiece as soon as you walk in the apartment. It's such a brilliant piece. You know that? I wish it had LEDs, but it's such a brilliant piece. Mm-hmm. But like his hand coming is going to be like my GI Joe representation for the vehicle. I don't yeah. have any put a, 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 a 36 inch dragonfly right now you unless, know? You're, unless you're hanging it off the ceiling right yeah and i'm like yeah and then i have a turtle van and then i have yeah. a batmobile that you know i'm waiting for my robert pattinson mafex batman to display it's still in the box as soon as i get that i'll put the lights on on that you know like so there's just so much shit um and i have two hazlabs coming still i have the his tank and i have the um transformers death Saurus. so it's like okay kind of good i really marvel has to like blow me away with what their has lab is going to be this week otherwise i'm not backing it they're going to have to absolutely blow me away a giant man's not going to do it for me it will not do it it has to be like a quinjet a fantastic car a blackbird well it's it, they said it's avengers right yeah okay, so, so yep, it's, it's, well. it's got to be a quinjet or a fin fang foom it's the only two things i'll buy that that's it. That's absolutely it. I will not bite out a giant man. I can't do it. I might, I, FOMO might get me, but I'm like, no, be strong. Your, your plan initially is not to. So when it comes, yeah. I, I was just looking at the uh, HasLab for the Dragonfly. There are yeah. 16,858 backers. So the yeah, next, next and final tier unlocks at 19,000, and it's just about two and a half days left. So yeah, possible, but at the very least they got two tiers out of it which is i think you know, pretty good and i don't predict it's going to be one that like once it goes up on the aftermarket that it's going to like triple in price i don't think so no because i'm sure a lot of people that are buying it are buying multiples yeah the energy for this is not the same as the his tank like the energy is not the same his tank was pretty steady through the whole thing. This mm-hmm. this has been at a very slow crawl after the first two days. Very slow crawl. But what I wanted to say for the DeLorean, so check this out. Their goal was $700,000. That was their goal, right? Yeah. They reached it in less than an hour. Wow. They tripled it in the first day. A $400 project, which most people got for three, tripled their goal in the first day. Kickstarter and Marvel and everybody should take note of this Tomy. Yeah, Tomy's a toy company that's been around for like 100 years. Yeah. But this is the one of their Kickstarters they decided to do. They need to look at this and go, holy shit, what are we not doing that they are? Well, I, I think in this case is literally because it's back to the future. I just didn't realize it was that big of a base oh, for it. Yeah. If I mean, think about it, like there are people that grew or came out in eighty five. So the people that have yeah. disposable income for it, if you grew up with Back to the Future, like you're gonna be anywhere from say born in nineteen seventy yeah. onward. And yeah, that's not wild, right. And then not to mention all of the other kids that like you and I who were born yeah. right, or, right around the time it came out. So would have only seen it on reruns on TV and stuff. So like then you get people yeah, like right. us like, oh, this is fantastic. And so then if we fell into it, you're going to yeah. get kids from, born in the 90s that would have fallen into it. Yeah. So it's it's a massive part of pop culture. It's a movie trilogy that still holds up to this day. Yeah. Right. Like there's. There's nothing bad about it. CGI is fine. There's no real CGI or special effects in it that look terrible. Like, no. It's it's an absolutely fantastic movie, and it, they've never gone back to remake it. It, it no. is the classic, quintessential, this is an 80s movie. It is brilliant. Mm-hmm. It still holds up. Yeah. 
and you you haven't seen a die cast DeLorean before. No, like they no. haven't had a, a, a DeLorean that size come That's out before. So, right. Yeah, like it doesn't surprise me that that is a thing that's uh, that's just ratcheting up in. Yeah, it's just in, I in, can't in money and stuff. It's still got like twenty eight days to go, or twenty seven yeah. days. Oh yeah, and they're over like, a million dollars at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just crushed it. They absolutely crushed mm-hmm. it. And like, wouldn't Marvel love to be able to do that right now? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and then you got Star Wars that's doing their HasLab too, and it's like, geez, are you going to be a three-time loser? Like, hopefully, Star Wars. Right now, the HasLab is supposed to be the ghost from Rebels, the ghost ship from Rebels. You can't really go wrong with ships, but to me, I'm like, I don't have an attachment to Rebels, and not enough for a four or five hundred dollar ship. Like the Razor Crest was as far as I go. You know what I mean? So it's like. One, the Razor Crest is a totally cool design. And two, I have a very big attachment to the Mandalorian. But, yeah, no. I don't know if I can uh, go that kind of money on a fucking another HasLab. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. That's another thing that's kind of like, okay, I, I'm HasLab out at this point. Which I might be skipping HasLab this San Diego season, which I'd be fine with. To be honest, there won't be a shortage of HasLabs that we around the corner there's there's been a yeah. shortage of has labs that have appealed to a wide audience right and the then you've got the problem of the ones that do appeal to multiple audiences are released too close together yeah exactly exactly um but no so you got the has labs that's fine and then you got whatever neck is going to release and neck is going to release like 42 different new things they always do yeah so it's like oh man you know, I just got caught up on Gargoyles. I'm, I'm caught up on what's released right now, except for the Steel Clan member. I've got everything else. I'm like, please don't release, like, six new Gargoyles, please. Not right now. But the Turtles, I'm every time I say, you know what? I'm already done with Turtles. I've got everything I need for Turtles. Um, I just saw your note go across the screen. Um, I'm already done with Turtles. Um... Yeah, that never happens. Because they just placed a pre-order for two new turtles. I got the the last Ronan, Raphael, and Karai pre-ordered. I was going to say, I, I can't imagine you would ever actually be done with turtles. I'll never be done with turtles. It's like being done with Batman. It's never happening. You know? It's like, I yeah. can't. So, the other thing, though, is Super 7. That's around the corner, too. They've announced Cat, Cat's Lair in its full, like, complete glory. I'm like, oh, no. Like, that's the one that's going to kill me the most. I need Cat's Lair. I have to have Cat's Lair. Um, mm-hmm. It's supposed to be taller than Snake Mountain, which which makes me very excited. Um, I spoke to somebody. He's a friend of mine. We're, we, we're collectors. Um, we, You know, the shop I go to sometimes, he was there about a week ago. I can't say his name. But he did the principal photography for the Cat's Lair. That's so cool. So, he was talking to me and he was like, yeah, he runs a toy podcast. He's really good. Um, it fucking, I, I have to find the name of the toy podcast because otherwise I'm not properly giving it. I'll find the name of it. But um, yeah, so he's like, yeah, it's huge. I'm like, how big is it compared to Snake Mountain? He's like, I can't give you exact because he'd get, you know, in trouble. But he's like, it's big. I'm like, is it comparable? Is it bigger? He's like, it's 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 freaking huge. So I'm like, all right, I'm taking that to know it's bigger. Thank you. I'm running. Yeah, this. It's like he doesn't you can't tell you, but you yeah. can you can infer from his words what he's meaning. Yeah. And then you've got Mayfex, Mezco, all the other toy companies, Playmates, like every toy company under the sun, Hasbro, G.I. Joe, Star mm-hmm. Wars, like everything you can imagine is going to be on display next week and the thing is with all the um you heard about the actors like backing out of san diego comic-con i did yep now it's going to be like a, a harken back to like the toy comic book convention of yesteryear i know and i want to see how good it goes because that's the shit that i love san diego comic-con yeah hall h is great and all that stuff I don't go to it, so it's not something that grabs me. You know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. I love watching 20 hours of toy news. Yeah. So I, I, I just, I just think that's definitely something that I would rather pay attention to is the comic same. toy news as opposed to the movie news. Cause same. movie news you get from anywhere, right? Exactly. Every week. Yeah. So, um, with that being said, cause I, I there's just too much to name. I figured we could do a, like a mini version of our wish list right now. Just off the top of your head, quick five. Oh, God. Yeah, you can do it. We'll power through. And I'm going to, I'll start first. It doesn't, you know, you just say the company. It doesn't have to be all Marvel Legends. It doesn't have to be, you know. So I'm going to start first. Marvel Legends, uh, Kane, Clone Saga Kane, number okay. one. So can I, I'm going to assume we're not going to list the same thing. Correct. So you're gonna. So to... yeah. So you're a bastard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I also will stick with Marvel Legends because I can't think of the guy's name at the moment in Thank the you. other thing. But it's uh, I want I want the finally fully announced Jim Lee Sabretooth. Oh, that is freaking amazing! Yeah, <laughs> in scale Jim Lee Sabretooth, mm-hmm. like really well done. Yep. Do you want it for the VHS or do you want it for like comic book? I don't care. I don't care either. Even if I, it would, has, I would rather yeah. I would rather the comic book. Yeah. Because that's what I would. That's just what I would rather. But the VHS yeah. line, it would fudge in with with everything else. Yeah, and it will go great with your VHS Wolverine that's going to be on exactly. its way too. So yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, that's a great one. All right, and then let's see. Um. Well, they've already done everything I've really truly wanted for G.I. Joe, so I'm good. Gargoyles, they've already announced it, so I'm I'm fine with that. I guess for me, it's a stupid one, but I would like zero from Jada Toys Mega Man. It's not in any order, but you know, it's one I want. Yeah. It's number two would be zero from um Mega Man. I would love a um and I would actually probably pick this up, but a uh It's the Phantom, but from Mafex, or oh, uh, no, or Mezco. Basically, oh with, my God, Mezco. I don't know why they haven't done a classic yeah. pulp Phantom yet. Yes, sorry, Mezco. I was trying to think. Wait, I know which one I'm thinking of, and I always get yeah. Mezco and Mafex confused. But I, I think it would be a, a Mezco Phantom. Yeah, that's a good one. The NECA one wets the whistle. It really does. Mm-hmm. I have the, the cartoon one. You have the the classic with the striped jumpsuit, like the striped trunks. But yeah, I get that in cloth would be so unbelievably amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I would fucking love that. That's a great one, Alex. All right. So for Mayfix for me, I mean, I know they're going to announce it. They're going to announce the um, the Connor Kent, um, you know, return to Superman Super Bowl. It's the only one they haven't announced yet. Um. No, actually, they haven't announced Eradicator either. But that that would be my Mayfex want. I want classic 90s yellow goggles, no Cheeto fingers, bendable wired cape, Eradicator for Super. That's what I want. I want yeah. that. So that's three. Uh, so I think third for me would be a uh, Masterverse Karate from the new animated uh, New Adventures of He-Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good Because I think one. they're doing Slushhead. I think I saw Slushhead was announced. Yeah, Slushhead already, yeah. Um, has he come out yet? I don't no, think he so. Yeah. He, he's been announced, which is why I didn't go for him, because he was always one of my favorite villains. Yeah. Uh, but Karate was high up there, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I could get with that. That makes perfect sense. Um, Let me see. I'm going to go out the box here. So that was my number three. So my number four is a Mondo figure. But it's my dream Mondo figure. And it's a Mondo figure two pack. If they can pull it off. It's my dream two pack. Like I said that the day they announce this. And if this comes to fruition. I'm done collecting Mondo. Because I can't think of anything better. And then I just. I want a Batman Beyond. With a Terry McGinnis head. And an old man Bruce Wayne. Mm. Mondo sized. That's my dream. Those are the two. I think uh, number four, and I'm totally cheating on this, mm-hmm. is would be an announcement that someone, whether it would be uh, 
Hasbro, Mattel, it, someone is doing an, an amalgam line of uh, figures. From oh my god, you mean from the amalgam like DC? Yep. Versus Marvel? Yep. I would only want two. Spider Boy oh, is not Dark Claw. Yeah, there's not many I would want, but I, you know damn well they would release the ones you do want first. Oh yeah. I mean, who else besides Spider Boy and Dark Claw would you want? I'd probably go for Hyena. Oh, with the Joker. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. Joker favorite too. Um, Super Super Soldier would be cool. Yeah. Okay. Just because, like, I think he he look he's got a unique ish look, like the yeah, com- he does. combination he does. between the two of them. Um, yep. Yeah, I can't think of any else off the top of my head. All right. So my fifth, and I'm struggling here. This is not easy to do. Not off the top, off the top of your head. It's really difficult to do. Um. I'm looking at my, <laughs> I'm like cheating now, looking at my like stuff on the wall. Um, oh, you know what? I would love them to announce, to Todd McFarlane to announce that they are restarting the DC Collectibles animated license, but expanding it to Justice League Unlimited. That mm. would be what I would. I, I would love to announce them to announce a line of, pulp heroes in the reaction yeah. style oh really why because i've over the last little while i'm like oh i kind of like i've got like four retro legends up on the wall yeah and then i found an indiana jones one on i'm like oh i'll pre-order yeah. that i'm like oh god here we go so this is currently my new favorite thing is yeah on box reaction fate sort of thing so i would just so get a, becoming a 3.75 pervert are you well I'm never going to open them. They're just they're mm-hmm. great wall hangers. They they don't take up a lot of space. Mm-hmm. And as I've decided, I'm not going to collect everything, just the ones I actually give a shit about. Mm-hmm. So like I've got Wolverine, Venom, Thor, yeah. and Hulk. So I wouldn't yeah. want. I don't really. There's only a couple more I want, like Spider Man. Yeah, Green Goblin. You know, um, I think I want Magneto and Moon Knight are the only other ones I actually want, and I've got them all on order somewhere. Nice. But I was like, well, then I can grab um, Indiana Jones, and if I'm going to branch out to India, I'll probably grab Mando as well at some point. And yeah, just... they, they, all, they look fabulous in the card. Yeah, agreed. They, they do lose not... all magic. It's like Hulk Hogan when the bandana comes off. When um, you know, he's in the middle of the ring and he does yeah. the leg drop, or he gets knocked down and the bandana falls off and he ages forty years. I know. Like, they lose the luster as soon as. As soon as um, you know, they come out of the bubble, but they look so brilliant on the bubble. Yeah, I, I've got an open Wolverine one, and he looks cool from the front, but from the back, it's um. Yeah, they're just like you could tell they didn't care from the back. They're like, yeah, it, these are clearly the ones that are meant to stay in box. Yeah. All right, that's good choices. Um, when everything gets announced, I'll be like, oh yeah, that was my choice. That was my mm-hmm. choice. I'll pull the Jerry the King Lawler. I'll be like, oh yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. I meant that. But like right now, off the top of my head, it's super hard to figure out what you want. So it's really tough just thinking about it. Let's say like a genie granted your wishes. It's not as easy as it seems. You'd be like, oh, I got to think about this for a sec because it has especially, ramifications for the rest of my es- life. Especially like, we'll grant you wishes, but you can only, you can't like, do, you can only get, um, or you can't get money or wealth. You've got yeah. to choose things. I'm like, ah. oh my god, things would be like, what the hell? Yeah, Jeez, genie, why don't you just give me nothing? You know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even if it's like a case of like, well, can I choose like health related things? Like, I can't choose like increase my monetary stand. Like, yeah, I don't know. That's funny. Health wouldn't even have entered into my thing, but it should be like the number one if you can't choose. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 I'm gonna die tomorrow. Hold on. What do you mean? Wait. No, but like, yeah, it's just one of those things that it, you know, you always think like, what would you ask from? Like, well, I mean, you you would ask for for wealth so that you could then afford to do a lot of the things that you would otherwise wish for. Like, why would you wish for, um, yeah. for example, a a vacation to Hawaii or something? Right. Like, well, if I could get three billion dollars i can do that yeah exactly right? of course so then at that point you're, like, well, you're vacationing for three billion dollars but that's like outer space money 
<laughs> well, I mean, if you had, if you got three billion dollars, you could do that and everything else you you wanted to do, right? Like yeah, you could do do so much. So yeah. So no, I I get that. That's that's cool. And then I figured we close up like what we were opening with when we were recording but not recording. So <laughs> I am so over the moon with this Adam Cole MJF pairing. Mm-hmm. It is. For AEW, for those in context, it is so incredible. It is just so good. I never thought I would like this. Like, I knew it was going to be, like, gimmicky. But, man, I, I, and I love FTR, too. I want them to beat FTR. And I know you're probably like, <gasps> no, I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of with you. Because if they don't beat FTR, it's over. The storyline's over. Like, you yeah. know they've got no possible place. If they beat FTR, it's got legs. And, like, trust me, if they beat FTR, they're not going on a long tear. They'd be on, they'd be tag champs for like three weeks, maybe. I think you would see at most, you would see them beat FTR, then you'd see Bullet Club Gold take it from them, and then FTR would probably yeah. take it back. Like, I, I think FTR yeah, would end I, up with the belts again after that. Oh, of course. I, like, could, I could see Adam Cole turning on MJ up. I think I that's how it's going to go. I think it should, because now you get him more into super villainy type of thing, where MJF is like, I tried to be a good guy. I even tried to make a friend. Well, now fuck all of you. The devil's back, and he's even worse. Like, because, listen, they, they were smart. They realized, hey, we don't have any contenders for MJF right now, and we want to get him till 2024, obviously, mm-hmm. as champion. We, don't, we, we need to drag this out, but how do we drag this out? And They were smart. I never saw this pairing coming in a million years. Never. No. And all the real life storyline stuff that's coming up with it is brilliant. Like, I don't know if you follow MJF, but if you saw the tweet that his old wrestling um, trainer, Pat Buck, found a list from when he first started training years ago. And it said my top five wrestlers and Adam Cole was number four. And it was written in MJF's handwriting. That's fantastic. And MJF was like, you know, and then there was like another thing he found. And he's like, if you could do this tomorrow, what do you want to do? He's like, be like Adam Cole. Like, that's real life. Mm. This is where I say people who say, oh, he's got to be the big piece of shit walking on the earth. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. He's a good one. But this guy's obviously human, too, because it reeks. The reason why the storyline is going so well. It's because I think he's truly just fucking having fun out there with Adam Cole, who's an idol of his. Yeah. I think he is just like, oh, my God, you know, way back when me is hanging out with his idol right now, doing a storyline and having fun. It's like, I think what he wanted to do with CM Punk, and they had a brilliant feud. Their feud mm-hmm. is still favorite. But Punk doesn't like MJF the way Adam Cole seems to actually like him in real life. No, I and- know. It's so good. It's so good. Like, I love how um, Adam Cole is streaming on his uh, on his Twitch. (laughs) Like, it's the bleed over is so good. Oh yeah, and they they're not even trying, and they haven't even tapped into the full wealth of that. No, but like with the Twitch thing where he's like, Max, Max, boundaries. Oh right, bro. No problem, bro. All right, cool. Like. Oh man, it just, but that's what's cool about it is mm-hmm. the fact that this storyline has real life legs because he obviously is a huge mark for Adam Cole when he was a kid and when he was training. That his wrestler, you know, his trainer found a letter and all this stuff that you can say this gives it even more juice. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Oh yeah. I just, and I always knew that Max has to be somewhat of a human being behind stage, he has to be. No one would work with him if he was as bad as you humanly. I, I think. actually I actually think the Max you're seeing right now is probably real life Max. Is probably as close to real life Max as you yeah. as you're gonna see. I think so too. I think he probably doesn't really have friends and shit like that. If not, he's really good at selling it. But I don't I just think he probably was an awkward kid and things yeah. like that. But I've been following him on Instagram for, for like two years now or over a year. And him and Britt Baker interact a lot, and they've always interacted. And I'm like, hmm, God, if you were that much of a piece of shit, and it's not storyline stuff, Britt Baker would probably not be interacting with you. 
Yeah. Like, and Adam Cole would certainly not interact with you if you were a piece of shit. So it's like, he's got to be a decent guy at some level, but he's just very protective of his gimmick. And I think when he got into wrestling, he was like, I'm going to protect this to the end. I need everyone to help me. Because Mm -hmm. when he goes to Long Island, he's beloved. When he goes to create a pro wrestling, which is where he started with Brian Myers and Pat Buck, he's beloved. And he's just so versatile. I I was just astonished. I'm like, I can't think of another wrestler that's able to do the heel turn, face turn, heel turn, face turn, heel turn, face turn, and you buy it each time. And you do it. And it's like weekly. He's switching weekly. He's been able to do that in the history of wrestling that I, you know, me and my buddy Donnie agree on is Vince McMahon. Yeah, he's the only one. He's the only one who could come out on Raw, be the biggest asshole, and then on SmackDown, be like, ah, he's all for the crowd, and the crowd buys into it, and then goes back on Raw. Yeah, Max has that versatility, and this is what I mean. Like, this is what they needed because I think if you just had him doing challenger after challenger after challenger, I think it would get boring. This mm-hmm. is the juice that's getting you through the summer. It's also getting you to Wembley. It might even get you to a situation where they're defending the tag belts at Wembley against a British or European tag team. Which would also be fun, yeah. Because what are you going to do with Adam Cole versus for MJ, an MJF at Wembley right now? Wembley's coming up in six weeks. So are you going to inevitably turn one of them heel and have them fight and have the grudge match at Wembley? I think it could happen, obviously. I, I think if it's going to be a grudge match, it's going to be a all out. I don't yeah. think I now, think do you when, know what I noticed too. I don't know if you noticed this watching Dynamite and then I gotta go. I looked at the time. Um they moved the matchup for the finals to next week. Did you notice that? I did notice that. I thought that was the week after. Dude, the start of the show was the finals of these tournaments are gonna compete on July 29th. Mm-hmm. So that's a couple weeks away. And then during broadcast. They said the winner of this will go against um, Ricky Star. No, no, what was it? Who was the um? Um, it was uh, Sky Blue, right? No, 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 no. I'm talking for Adam Cole and MJF. They go for the, oh. the final next week. It got moved up mid match. The announcers oh. brought it up, and I was like, "Well, surely that's a flub." Mm. And then they showed the graphic afterwards next week. I was like, "Wait a minute! When did it just jump two weeks?" Probably because they realize that they can add a, a little bit of, like, if FTR, if FTR lose to Bullet Club Gold on Collision. Yeah. And then Bullet Club Gold lose to MJF and FC, uh, and whatever, uh, Adam Cole. Oh, good point. And then you get FTR, Bullet Club Gold, and yeah. ah. MJF versus Adam Cole as a six man tag main event in um cool. wherever right. and yeah. if if cm punk is tur- is actually turning heel yeah. i can see ftr starting to, to i could see them turning yeah. heel around the same time good point that would be a great you know what you just really wow the student has become the teacher <laughs> um freaking i didn't even see that that's right they're going against them on collision FTR and uh, Bullet Club Gold. It wouldn't make sense for a crazy babyface team like Adam, of, like Adam Cole and MJF to go against FTR because they're both babyfaces. Yeah, like it would and, be terrible crowd. Like, but if you had Bullet Club Gold win it, oh, people would be frothing for Adam Cole and MJF yeah. to win it. But from yeah, perfect. Oh man, I'm excited. Collisions tonight too. I forgot all about that. Yeah, and and I think the FTR are all about putting over talent too, right? Because they've said themselves oh. they're 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 coming to the end of their careers. They know that. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are. So I wouldn't be surprised if instead of CM Punk going for a like once FTR lose the title, you start seeing CM FTR yeah. going after the trios belts. Yeah, good point, dude. Really good point. We like, need you know, trios. Yeah, down anyway. at, I, I love the House of Blackest trios champs, but it they're yeah. not gonna, they're not going to be trios champs for long, and you you do need a couple yeah. of short runs of trios yeah. of champions for anything. Absolutely, it's like with um, MJF having the belt for this long, I think the next champion won't have it anyway near as long as MJF no. has had it. No way, no. But I definitely got to run. Yep. So um, we'll wrap this up. I have no final thoughts. I also have no final thoughts. 
folks. <laughs> thoughts, folks. Uh, you, yeah, this is where we're at. Uh, yep. All right, we will. Uh, this is a really abrupt and rough ending, but we will catch you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.